Hi guys, welcome back. I have a, a quick couple of comments to make. I've updated some of the cells in the Coupled Masses project. Um, this, this week the project is all about eigenvalues and eigenvectors and I have two different options and, and it, literally if you want to do a project as long as it involves eigenvectors and eigenvalues I'll be happy. But here's a couple of different examples that are, are relevant and are also related to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So first of all let me just, uh, I'm going to set use visual to false here to begin with and just run through some of these cells. The video that's already posted talks about all this, um, so I'm not going to go into detail. You should watch that video. But I do want to talk about the cells that I've added here. So um, the idea is we've got a couple of masses c connected together by springs. We end up with a uh, system of matrices and an eigenvalue problem. The eigenvalue problem is that um, when you hit a vector with a matrix you get a number times the matrix back again. In this case the two eigenvalues turn out to be uh, KB over M and KB plus 2KS over M. KB is the um, bond between the two, the spring constant between the two masses, and Ks is the spring constant be between the walls of the uh, system and the masses. Um, the point is that we end up with these two eigenvectors, which are mass the masses are displaced equally and the masses have opposite displacements. Those eigenvectors correspond to a couple of different eigenvalues, which are the frequencies of the motion. It turns out when the mass is sloshed together, it's a low frequency mode of vibration, and when they slash in opposite directions, it's a high frequency mode of vibration, relatively high frequency. Um, what I want to point out is I've added a couple of cells down here. This cell, which shows the two eigenvectors in terms of the displacement of the two masses. So if the two masses have equal displacements, that's this eigenvector, if the two masses have opposite displacements, that's this eigenvector. If the displacements are equal, that's the slosh together mode. If the displacements are opposite, that's the slosh in the opposite direction mode. What I've also added is another cell that shows if you just pick a random vector, let's say the one we pick up here. Oh, there we go. The one we picked here. 0.4 and 1 is the uh, original displacement, and that gave us this sort of motion that looks kind of random. It's like a mixture of two different modes of vibration because it's the amplitude is growing and dropping, and so that's not simple. It's complicated motion. Um, if I do that, you'll notice that that point, point here's 1 and here's 0.4. So 0.4 and 1, it's a combination of this eigenvector and that eigenvector. If I were to make this guy 1 and this guy 0.4, then you could see that now it's uh, positive components. It's this eigenvector plus that eigenvector. Here are the coefficients. This much of eigenvector 1, which is that guy, and that much of eigenvector 0, which is that guy. So that's the total displacement. Of course, I didn't have that. I had this was 0.4 and this was 1. And so in that case, I have a negative of the eigenvector 0 and a positive part. So here, here's the positive part of eigenvector 1. There's the negative part of eigenvector 0. You can see how that goes. If you, This is the analytical solution. Notice, I just want to look at this. This is, I calculate the dot product between eigenvector 0 and this initial x. I get a coefficient. I calculate the dot product of the second eigenvector with x and I get the other coefficient. So this is how you calculate the contribution of a particular eigenvector toward some arbitrary displacement. And so this tells us how much of each of the two eigenvectors we end up with. I use those same two coefficients here to construct the analytical solution. It's C0 times eigenvector 0 times the cosine of omega 0 times t plus C1 times eigenvector 1 plus the cosine of omega 1 times t. So that's how that is constructed analytically. And you'll notice, let's see, that's, uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. That solution is exactly the same thing we had here, right? So that's not a surprise. 
What's interesting is if I set the initial condition to match the eigenvector, let's say I make them equal displacements, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Notice now I'm lined up directly along an eigenvector. There's no component in this eigenvector direction. Notice C0 is 0, C1 is finite. And if I plot that, this becomes a beautiful pure cosine. So it's a nice, easy to see cosine. And notice when this guy has a positive displacement, this guy has a positive displacement, and this just goes on forever. Okay? On the other hand, if I were to switch this to a negative displacement on this side, that matches the other eigenvector. Now we're pointing along this eigenvector direction, right? And no uh, component along that eigenvector. And if I plot that, I get this is positive, but at the same time, that's negative. When this one's positive, this one's negative. So these two masses are in opposition. They're sloshing opposite one another. I can visualize that explicitly by going back and setting use visual to true. And then um, I'll watch this motion. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't, I didn't change the initial conditions. So let me go back here. And let's change the initial conditions so they're equal, 0 0.4. And then we'll watch that motion. Now they're sloshing together. Notice the spring in the middle is not stretching or changing. Only the springs on the outside. That's part of the reason why the eigenvalue turns out to be kb over m, because ks doesn't, or I'm sorry, ks over m because KB doesn't even matter. And notice they slosh together. And this is a relatively low frequency. On the other hand, if I stop this guy, go back and change the initial condition, make this one minus. Okay, redraw it, rerun it. Now they're sloshing opposite. Now notice this middle spring is heavily involved because they're opposite one another. They're not sloshing together, they're sloshing in opposition. The frequency is higher, but still this motion is a simple cosine motion. There's no complicated sloshing back and forth or whatever. The two masses just stay in uh, perfect synchronism. Uh, there's never any other frequency other than the eigenvalue of that high frequency mode. So I'm gonna stop this again. I'm gonna change this back to false. Right? I'm going to run the whole thing. Run all. And then what I want to point out, oh, now notice that I've got a nice cosine. That fit is perfect. Okay. Um, let's see. What else was there? Oh, what happens if I set it where one is uh, something and the other one is zero? Now I've got equal parts of the two eigenvalues or eigenvectors. And when I graph that, then I see the sloshing back and forth. In fact, I can go ahead and bump this back to, say, 15. And you can see that this is oscillating back and forth. Let's make this a little bit higher resolution. This is sloshing back and forth. The energy is on this oscillator. It slowly goes over to that guy. Then it goes back over to this guy, and so on, back and forth. Um, and that's, uh, that's the way it works. All right, that's probably enough gabbing for now. I hope that helps.